The Morgan Report with David Morgan. Hi, this is David Morgan with you for the weekly perspective for the week ending 14 June 2019. Well, the stock market ended last Friday on a very positive note and opened up this week with stocks going on a strong note. So just to kind of back up a slight bit, the stock market, the U.S. stock market, was in a <clears throat> correction phase for a while, slow, easy one, not that deep, but it was in a correction phase. That is over, at least for the time being. In fact, I'll show a chart here in a moment that... Uh, for all of June, both the Dow and the S&P 500 have been up, up, and away. I realize we're only two weeks into the month, but what I'm saying is stocks are acting strong again. Um, they, the indexes have cleared their 50-day moving average, so all the technicians out there are pretty happy about that. Again, contributing to the strength of the sector. And it's worth noting that this is not just... Uh, a handful of Dow stocks, the 30 stocks that could be manipulated pretty easily. The breadth uh, summation index, which is the breadth of the market, is above the zero line, which means it's broad-based. So we may get a pretty good rally into the summer here that uh, not too many expected, perhaps. Some did. I don't know. What I do know is what I'm telling you what is happening right now. The momentum is pretty strong. I expect it will continue. Well, first one up for this week. Zero Hedge, which I use periodically, usually a couple times a month at least. They have great articles. Australia, quote, grim, unquote, retail sector, clearly in recession, warns National Australian Bank. Been warning about Australia for some time. There are bubbles everywhere, including housing. They're really The real economy is not that strong whatsoever, and it looks like they're going to have problems. I do do an interview with uh, pretty well-followed, uh, personality down there in uh, in Australia, and I think he's reached out here recently to have me back on the show. Not that that's all that meaningful, but we do have a pretty good following in Australia. Uh, we don't cover a lot of Australian stocks, although we do look at a lot of them. We just don't recommend many, usually because the share structure is so bad, and secondly, um, there's not that many of merit. The big ones there, BHP and RTZ, of course, are always worth owning if you're a conservative investor with uh, long-term capital gains in mind. So I will mention those two. Uh, next up, let's look at the energy market. This is from oil.com. Analyst, 2019 oil demand growth could be lowest in years. While OPEC and Russia are busy calibrating a possible extension to their production cuts, analysts and traders have turned their attention away from oil supply concerns and are focused again on faltering economic growth and a downbeat outlook on oil demand growth. So that's that. Let me just comment that, of course, we've had this Strait of Hormuz uh, incident uh, that I won't comment as far as real or not. All I can say is it took place, at least that's what the mainstream news says. So it's a volatile situation. I mean, we could see this fact-finding situation I'm reporting here on oil.com but in the meantime, if something happens that uh, causes, you know, a disruption in oil supply, then, of course, the costs or the price of oil could go the opposite direction in a very, very short amount of time. So bear in mind, right now, Middle East, always volatile, uh, more volatile currently than it has been in recent days. Keep your eye on it. Don't expect uh, any certainty in the oil sector one way or the other, no matter what the analytical outlook looks like. It's pretty hard to predict especially when there's so many outliers that we are unaware of that could happen basically at any time. Back to zero head, U.S.-China trade war damage may be irreversible. With the trade war between the U.S. and China on the brink of re-escalating once more, a journalist told ABS and CBN News Philippines that damage to global supply chains from the trade war might be irreversible. President Trump threatened to slap tariffs Monday on the remaining $300 billion of Chinese exports to the U.S. if China's President Xi Jinping did not meet with him on the 2019 G20 Okusama Summit on the 28th to 29th of June 2019. And I'm not going to read the whole thing. Again, this is another volatile situation that we see in the financial markets, and this trade war thing gets a lot of financial press, as it should. Is it being overblown or not remains to be determined, but... Uh, 
personally, I think these things are a little bit overblown in the mainstream. I think there could be more of a understanding between, uh, let's say, the leadership of those two nations uh, than might be um, perceived by the mainstream press. But again, it remains to be determined. And here's one that's come in recently. Cassius King in Hong Kong as thousands choose financial privacy. Some of you know I just returned from the Red Pill Conference in Hartford, Connecticut, and my speech was on money, past, present, and future. And of course, with the blockchain system, basically, and everyone moving to a know-your-customer situation, there's going to be no financial privacy, and basically the powers that be, at least the way I analyze it, are looking to remove cash from the system. They want a cashless society and every transaction tracked everywhere, always, by everyone. So this is uh, Hong Kong, and they're saying, uh-huh, they're using cash. According to various reports surfacing on social media this week, participants in the ongoing rallies against the Hong Kong government are choosing to abandon payment methods which could track them. A plan law dubbed extra extradition bill warns to make it possible to send suspects to mainland China. This, the protesters say, would open up Hong Kong's legal system to manipulation and for Beijing. And this is there's a lot of people out there are protesting. If you're not aware of this, you should do some further study or a little Google search or Bing search or whatever and get up to speed on this. I'm not totally up to speed, but... Uh, it's far more than just this article, but something that you should really pay attention to. Further in the article, it talks about a perfect storm for Bitcoin. Question mark. A Bitcoin, this has reported multiple governments have declared war on cash as part of their efforts to standardize their country's economies. While authorities say such measures reduce crime, opponents argue it leaves the door open to full control of the financial system and opportune intrusion into the citizens' financial lives for any purpose. So... Again, it's kind of a double-edged sword. It's good to know both sides of the story. And another one that kind of uh, got under my radar this week came from Bloomberg on their economic section. Cult economist jailed for hiding rare coins says they're his now. This is all about Martin Armstrong. You can read the article. It talks about 58 coins worth, I don't know, 12 million or something, 12.9 million. And... I'm just commenting on an article. I don't really know what the facts are. Uh, usually on these type of write-ups, there's always something that's, uh, you know, they're not always 100% factual. But, um, you know, one thing I will comment on was very interesting in my career was uh, starting off on the speaking circuit very long time ago now, probably over 20 years ago or so, I was in a World Outlook Conference with... Uh, a uh, large contingency of Canadian analysts, stockbrokers, uh, retail, and um, institutional investors. And I laid the case for silver being very undervalued. And I had more than one, actually about three or four, that came up to me after my presentation and were warning me that Martin Armstrong was shorting silver. And this is when it was about five bucks or less. It was around the five dollar level, I'll put it that way. And I never heard of him, but these people were very enamored with his, uh, with him and his message and what he's done and everything else. So always, I'll never forget that. And so, uh, yeah, I think, you know, if you follow his career or not, whatever, I just want to comment on this, uh, that here he is. I don't know the facts. Um, I'm just going to just report it and leave it at that. So now I want to move on to the silver, since I just commented on what I heard hearsay from some of, uh, Marty's, uh, let's say, fans, and, you know, the time that they gave me the information, um, you know, he might have changed his mind or whatever, so I don't really know the facts. All I can tell you is the the uh, experience that I went through and when it was, and it was during a time frame, and he wasn't in jail at that time, but I, I'd never heard of him, but certainly I've, I know who he is now and have for many, many years. Anyway, moving on, since I touched on what, he, what they told me he said about Silver, uh, there was a book out, and I don't have my library anymore, but it was uh, very negative silver. It was pre-internet, really, so we'll talk uh, pre-1999. I know the internet started before that, but it came into adoption with our early adopters, such as myself, around, I don't know, I think 97 or so is when I first got on the internet. Regardless, this book was very anti-silver, and in fact, the book went to, as far as to say that there's so much silver out there 
that we could use it in the currency again. There's just no reason not to. I mean, it's just left laying everywhere. Well, I remember that, and I can't, can't prove it with you. I don't recall the name of the book, and you can trust me or not. But this, I pulled up this week, how much U.S. currency is in circulation. And I'm going to bypass what there are as far as Federal Reserve notes and not talk about that at this time. What I want to focus on is the coins outstanding is $47.2 billion. All right? Well, there's about $2.5 billion ounces of silver that's available in uh, investment form. So at $15, you're looking at like $60, $65 billion total value if all the silver in the world uh, was used for U.S. coinage. Now, I know $47.2 billion is uh, dimes, quarters, nickels, pennies. I really don't see halves anymore, and you do see very few U.S. dollars. They're much more popular in Canada, for example, the Looney and the Tooney. But the Satchiwea here, and there's other another one, very rarely used. So you'd have to take that 47.2, maybe cut it in half. I don't know how many um, nickels and pennies there are in that mix. But even at that, I think I'm making my point that there isn't enough silver to back U.S. coinage, dimes, and quarters at you know, 90%, the standard monetary value uh, when you consider it money, uh, as this you know, outline was proposed in this book so many years ago. So uh, that's just on the coin side. I mean, I said I wasn't going to talk about the, the currency side, but let's take a look at that. If you look at the uh, 1.7 trillion in circulation as of January 31st, 2019, that's currency, and you divide that by the 65 uh, billion value, you see what the price of silver would have to be if you're on a silver standard, not a gold standard. So anyway, I'm just pointing out that silver is still misunderstood, and of course, the monetary aspect of silver is only a portion of it. I understand that fully, that it is both an industrial and monetary metal, uh, but it does have a mon monetary component. So I'll leave that alone for now. I'm just going to talk about the gold market for a moment or two. So it looks like right now the uh, intermediate, <clears throat> intermediate trend is favoring gold. We've stayed above the $1,300 level. Today we breached the uh, $1,350 level. Early in the session, and it fell off. Uh, 1350, 1360 is a technical breakout point. It's going to test it again, I'm sure, and it's going to break through. And at one, sometime, it is going to hold. Uh, weaker dollar is part of the reason. Uh, I have always said, you know, especially recently, I've been harping on it really that the stock market and gold are the most inversely correlated. And I just updated this with the start selling the stock market is strengthening and it is the dollar is weakening but gold's starting to act pretty good actually uh basis you know just the price action and the amount of volume that's going on so and the dollar is weakening so we'll see how the trends continue also falling interest rates are also boosting gold falling interest rates are <clears throat> supporting the price of gold that's because gold's a non-yielding asset and so the lower that the interest rates go, the less risk there is in holding gold because neither one of them uh, provide a return, in other words, an interest or a yield, then uh, there's really no harm in owning gold if both are zero. They're not. I'm just pointing out lower interest rates actually helps gold. At least that's what the mainstream press continues to say. And gold's, uh, of course, as I said, impacted by the direction of the stock market. Uh, and we... That we, the investing community, investors at large, institutions, retail, have not yet lost interest uh, or confidence in the stock market at this point in time, subject to change. Hello, I'm David Morgan, publisher of The Morgan Report, and as some of you may already know, The Morgan Report is about money, metals, and mining. In fact, we cover all resources, from rare earth elements to precious metals. I've been publishing on the internet for about 20 years. My primary passion is to help people build and preserve their wealth. I love to make people millionaires. 
I've helped thousands of people via our research in the Morgan Report, which has thousands of paid members and 10 times that amount on our free weekly updates. Here's what you'll receive from our free newsletter. To the point webinars, weekly analysis of the financial markets, interviews and our conference schedule, special reports such as riches and resources, and various metals price forecasts. Our paid service client base is primarily small to medium-sized business owners, professionals in the industry, or the seasoned investor who understands markets and the value of precious metals. My area of expertise includes equity analysis throughout the resource sector, energy metals, base metals. We cover startups to billion dollar corporations. We focus on a special sector that makes money regardless of price oscillations and the importance of precious metals due to the ongoing currency devaluations. Our team of three analysts and support staff can help you build and protect your wealth. It's important for you to know what other people have said. We're passionate about what we do. High integrity and trust. Tell the truth and own it. If we're wrong, we admit it. Take a long-term outlook with major assets and bet a little to win a lot with speculative situations. If you choose to become a client, you will gain financial insights very few even professionals recognize. You will understand the importance of honesty in our financial system. You will understand how the money system influences almost everything in your life. You will be prepared for the ongoing currency crisis. And finally, I've chosen to make my life's mission greater than the individual, which means my mission statement is to teach and empower people to understand the benefits of an honest monetary and financial system. It's been a great journey so far and the best gains in this sector lie ahead over the next three to five years. I'm fortunate to have earned the status of being a leading authority in my field in helping others protect their wealth. You can email me at support at themorganreport.com or call my office at 480 325-0230.